Ooh, applications and effects. An expert system is a computer software that's programmed to act like a human expert on a particular subject area. They can often be used to advise non-experts in situations where a person is not there to help them. An expert system is made up of three parts, a knowledge base, a user interface, and an inference engine. A knowledge base is a collection of facts and rules. The knowledge base is created from the information which is provided by the human experts. A user interface is a system that allows a non-expert to ask the ex expert system a series of questions so he can receive advice. And finally, an inference engine is basically a search engine. So when the non-expert asks a que question, the, the expert system goes through the inference engine to answer that question and give the non-expert advice. In medical diagnosis, the knowledge base would contain medical information. The question would be the symptoms of the patient. And finally, the advice from the expert system would be how to diagnose the patient's illness. Simple. Expert systems can also be in games as well, such as strategy games like chess, which involves a player playing against the computer. The knowledge base would be the strategies and the moves, and the player's moves would be kind of the question or query, and the output or advice would be the computer's expert moves. Computer-based expert systems also have some problems. For example, they can't easily adapt to new circumstances, e.g. if they are presented with totally unexpected data, they are una unable to process it. Another thing is that they can be difficult to use. If a non-expert user makes mistakes when using the system, the resulting advice could be very wrong. And lastly, they have no common sense. A human user tends to notice obvious errors, whereas a computer can't. If people are far away from hospitals, what people can do is that they can visit doctors online and doctors can treat their patients at a distance. Doctors are able to send x-rays to radiologists hundreds of miles away and transmit video images of patients to specialists for instant consultations. Doctors can match the patient's radiographic information with data in a distance laboratory to determine diagnosis and treatment. Libraries often contain many thousands of books, magazines, CD-ROMs, and etc. In fact, some of the largest libraries, for example, the British Library in the UK, can tell well over 100 million books. That's a lot of things to keep track of. For this reason, libraries use computer-based systems to keep a record of their books and of the people who borrow the books. A computer computerized library database allows for quick and easy searching for books, easy printing of books lists, easy tracking of book loans, and automatic printing of warning letters for borrowers who have not returned the books. ICT can also be in games. Many people play a wide range of computer games. For example, World of Warcraft claims up to 1 million players every single day. There are many genres which include action, adventure, simulations, role-playing games, and strategy games. ICT can also be in communications. You can communicate with friends and family. There are applications which include Skype, Facebook, and Snapchat. In Skype, you can talk to someone while looking at them through a camera on the screen. If, if both you and the person you are speaking to have Skype, then the call could be free. This helps people keep in touch with friends and family who live in different parts of the world. ICT can be also in media streaming when you listen to music, look at movies, look at TV show, uh, shows, or even look at photos.